Hello family, welcome to 2024 and welcome to Source Energetics. Today I'll be sharing with you a pick a card that is going to give you insights, advice, and guidance around the next year of 2024 coming in, but also looking at this portal that is opening up through the year of 2024 into the next decade, which is a very powerful transition into the golden age for those who are vibrating on a heart frequency. And if you're tuned into this video, most likely you are one of those people who are very, very high level souls with advanced consciousness that has come here to bridge together into this golden age, this upcoming golden age. And it all starts with a personal golden age as it ripples out into the collective over the next decade. So in the upcoming year is going to be a year that you're going to be creating your personal heaven on earth. And I'm here to assist you make that calibration into anchoring into that highest timeline that you have ahead of you, not only for yourself, but also for the collective. And this reading is not just some kind of psychic insights. I mean, I do have psychic abilities, but I'm also an energetic healer. And so I'm going to help you actually calibrate your energy to align with your highest harmonics. And this is my service to you. So in the next decade, the society and humanity is going to shift and change far beyond our linear comprehension. And you likely feel this in the cells of your body. There's a shift that is occurring and there is this piercing alchemy that is rippling through the consciousness. First, beginning with your personal life, with your levels of consciousness, with your aspects of the mind that continues to transform. And there's this pulling thread of this higher level consciousness that is guiding you through this journey. And this is going to be happening with many, many, many different advanced souls that are here to actually pull a large chunk of the collective into this golden age that has never been experienced before even though we've had golden ages on earth or other planetary systems this is going to be one for the cosmic history because of the density and the polarity that we've all been playing with and it's going to be whew, something that i can't describe or put words to but you feel it in the cells of your body this is why you're here this is why you came here I'm hoping that this reading and this energetic calibration will help you prepare for all of the shifts that are coming through, helping you anchor into your highest, highest reality. And it starts with this fresh cycle of the new year of 2024. It's a powerful portal. And I know many people don't like to celebrate New Year's, but it is a definite shift in energy as the collective rendering of the time continuum goes to the next page. It is a powerful portal and this one in particular opens up to this whole bridge of this decade leading into the golden age. So uh, this reading is actually really inspired by these tarot cards that I just picked up called Unveiling the Golden Age. I'm definitely not affiliated with this author, but I just love that she went ahead and claimed the golden age. And that's what we should all do is we should begin to claim our golden age. We are here now. We're anchoring it right now. And it is here right now. And you feel it in your energetic field. You feel it in your subtle bodies. You feel it in the visceral embodiment of your vessel. It's here and it's now, especially if you're watching this. It begins now. It's been beginning, but now it's here. And um, yeah, this tarot, these tarot cards are written by Izzy Ivy, who is also the author who created the Lemurian Oracle deck. I don't know exactly what it's called. Something with Lemurian, you know, you know what I mean. You know which cards I'm talking about, probably. But anyway, so I'll, I'll be using these tarot cards with a bunch of other oracle cards. And also, again, this is going to be an energy session. So choose your pile with your intuition. You can choose more than one if you're guided to do that. And you can listen to all of them if you feel like that's medicinal for you. Then please go ahead and watch all of them. I'm honored that you're here opening up this cycle with me and let's have a lot of fun. I'll see you in your reading.
Okay. Pile one, if you chose Evolving Light Codes, this is going to be your golden age opening up through this next year and a decade plus. So what you'll see is that you're going to be going through a series of initiations, integrations, and codes activations. And this kind of microcosmic blueprint is going to activate through 2024, but this is really gonna actually amplify through the entire decade in the next 10 years. So if you happen to be watching this at many years later at some time, then this is still gonna be super relevant. So, you know, I don't know if you knew what you chose, but this is the star card. So all of these golden age cards are actually tarot cards, but there's really beautiful imagery and there's uh, another layer of interpretations around this energy. And this is the star card. And it's funny, you get the star seed card right here. And the second tarot card that you have is the world. You also have the great, the central sun, sorry, the central sun and the Pleiadian activation. So I'm going to go ahead to interpret everything. But first and foremost, you are the archetype of a star seed. And I know that probably everybody here watching this video is somewhat of a star seed, some percentage, some spectrum of a star seed. I, my channel used to be called Starseed Energetics before it alchemized into Source Energetics, but you are no fluff, absolute starseed. Like there's not much of a human history in your soul. And you come from planes that are so pristine that if you had ever even attempted to incarnate on the third dimension, your nature would just evaporate right away, like literally just evaporate into the light body. So this is a big deal that you are taking on a human body in this lifetime. And you are one of those great central beings from realms that are so far outside of our cognition you know sort of like how the edges of the observable universe you can't really know or even fathom what's beyond those edges you're kind of like that as a consciousness so it's not an understatement to say that this entire life has been probably one of the most challenging things that you have ever encountered in your ancient history of soul lineage this was probably just unthinkably challenging and i know that this earth paradigm and this entire collective itself is completely challenging for everyone but for you you just um you're not even from here. You're not even from this galaxy. Like you're probably not even from this universe. You're from another universe where the physics of the universe doesn't even work like a universe. I mean, <laughs> okay, that's a stretch a little bit because you've had many incarnations in other star systems. One that is showing up a lot is Pleiades over there. I also see Lyran energy. Um, Mintaka is also part of this energy. I mean, if I could choose an emotion to place there, it would be this sadness or this longing for a higher frequency of living. It's like there's this sadness of being cut off from these memories that you have that you can't really put a finger on but you remember what it's like to have an 
unconditional love between beings and complete respect between species and you enduring all of this life and you even being here like present in this time going through life going through your childhood and making it here is a really big deal metaphysically because it would have been near impossible and i know you're an ancient soul beyond ancient soul where you again originate from universes that are not even from this model of universes and multiverses just that's the best way i can describe how far away you come from here and i don't mean to put a distance i just mean just the levels of consciousness prior to this incarnation and there could be this massive void that you felt until this moment and it feels like you've done your absolute best until this day to just show up as your most authentic self and try the best with what you have been given while you just had no idea what you were doing still in a lot of cases you did the best you possibly could if you feel like I should have done better, you know, in your incarnation, I mean, like up until this point, if you feel like you haven't done enough, if you feel like maybe you should have made better decisions or that you're not doing enough right now, or that there's so many things that you still have to heal and improve, I need you to just give yourself a break and relax because I feel like you've done the best you could possibly do and you've done wonders and I feel like you haven't really noticed that about yourself and the blessings are opening up I feel like this upcoming decade is where you get to actually become the person you are always meant to be this whole cycle comes to a culmination and it's like you have a fresh karma it's as if you've burned through all of the karma that you've been given um archetypally speaking it's like you've broken through the most significant layers of the karma that you had to transmute from your family line your genetic family line your genetic ancestors excuse that it's a confirmation that's like a gecko um your genetic lineage and it's like you have finally burned through each and every single piece of the karmic breakthroughs that you promised to make as you took on this incarnation um and that it was not an easy thing to do that was so much work um uh, genuine authentic serious devoted work and the way that you approach your life path and your mission and your like soul lineage and your even your ancestral lineage that you took on the way that you treat these um tasks as a soul is so fiercely devoted like the most sacred loyal devotion as a as some unconditionally loving mothers would have over their newborn that's how sacredly you protect your path your mission why you're here and you're going through a massive transformation in the upcoming year and the upcoming decade you are absolutely not going to recognize yourself first of all you're going to be seen and that's a big part of this you're not only going to be seen in the sense of like being recognized for your work or being recognized for the service that you provide for the world because your mission has a lot to do with the new earth codes it's not just something that you're here to make a good life for yourself and in, enjoy life as it comes your your 
life, your service and your mission is for the entire world. Like you hold very specific codes for the new earth. And it's not just about being known for the crafts, but quite literally you're going to be seen for who you are anyone that crosses your path which means that you're going to activate this clarity in truth as part of your frequency so even if you encounter a stranger or you're just walking down a street there's just something about you that is kind of shifting the vibrations of the field and it's like this transmission of your frequencies or your consciousness that shifts the vibrations of the field and it, this is getting stronger and stronger it's like the crusts have cracked open for the earth to actually be able to receive what it is that you are attuned to first of all with the central sun um this is you i don't necessarily see this as just the central sun which i do want to talk about because we have you know the traditional central sun um so not our sun but the sun that our sun gravitates around is alcyone and then we have pleiades dimensional technologies that you are here to bridge together um, and when we say dimensional technology, honestly, it could even be shamanic. Shamanic practitioners or shamans tend to be the weaver of dimensions, the bridger of dimensions, or this could take form in a more technical level where you are <laughs> offering new earth technologies of how that can evolve onto the planet. Um, and you're gonna transform like if you just see there's so many imagery of just wings being spread wide open just wings like you're gonna fly like you are quite literally gonna fly and whether that means just you're gonna thrive you're gonna thrive and you're gonna fly and it's gonna be like when people witness you and it's not about like caring what people think, but it's more about like what happens when people witness you. Not just your physical being, but it's your vibratory being and the way that you weave through the life and your timelines. It's like the consistent way in which you evolve, the consistent way in which you show up and the consistent ways in which you embody these multifaceted codes because you have many different codes it's an activation and it's like people are going to witness you flying and it's going to be like wow it's possible to fly it's as if the entire species of humanity have been walking crawling and walking <laughs> running at best and then you just show that actually humans can fly and it's kind of like that what is that story about somebody running a, an eight minute mile or something i'm sorry if i get the whole metrics confused but when somebody broke through the world record of running a mile then eventually other people had a permission slip to do the same and it's the same thing for you and I'm sure that you have people around you in your life who are such permission slip anchors, like in your life, reflects on what people in your life, whether they are people that you know personally or people that you know just online, you know, like digitally, there's some people who just do what they do and that what they do gives you such a safe permission slip to know that something is possible or that like a certain way of life or a certain combination of 
archetypes are possible and you are one of them one of the people who are here to be a very strong permission slip for people to <laughs> connect with this interdimensional way of life and transform, optimize, and fly. Basically, fly. Thrive so authentically. Thrive so hard to fly. You have two more cards here that I will show you. One of them is Wolf Mastery. And the other one is Artemis Untamed. So there's this wilderness about you. There's this like wildness about you. Embrace this wildness. I feel as if um, all this time you've been playing by rules of a game that just wasn't even meant for you. Like you were playing by rules that doesn't even make sense to your physiology or your <laughs> um, your entire dynamics of energetic circuitry. It doesn't suit the rules that you've been enforced to play by. But in this upcoming year, I feel like you've quite literally cleared up whatever you have done in the past year. And I see this actually would have been majority of this shadow work or this karmic resolving has taken place in the past year. And now it's freed up space for you to be able to actually tune into your stellar codes and the way that you're going to synthesize these codes. And I'm feeling into the collective who chose this pile and I feel very diverse group of starseeds. Some of you guys are very eclectic. Is that the word? Eclectic. Um, and I don't even think you sometimes even notice how eclectic you are and it's not just the way that you put yourself together it's not the way that you talk or act even though those are reflections of it but just like your entire vibe is so interestingly unique i don't think you know this about yourself um but unless somebody is really really stupid they'd be able to tell that you're on some other level and <laughs> i want you to stop telling yourself that people just don't get you or that like um, you're kind of invisible if you, if you think like that at all or that maybe you could blend in and fit in you should know that even if you think you blend in you really don't um <laughs> And the more you align with your stellar codes that I see you aligning with, the more obvious it's going to be. And don't be afraid to be seen for who you are. It's like I see you kind of wanting to veil your authenticity in certain ways. And there could be a lot of reasons for that. And some of it is that you don't want... It to be too much for other people so the the feeling that i'm getting is that as this higher dimensional being you understand that your presence your sheer presence creates ripples in the energy field of anybody that comes across your path like especially in your physical presence and you know that your codes can drastically impact another person even if you're literally just walking past them or interacting with them just for 10 minutes, um, if somebody's not ready for a high voltage plasma, then it's gonna create purges or you know what I mean? It's, it's gonna be influencing people in a lot of ways. And I feel like you don't wanna ruffle the feathers of the wrong birds. It's like you don't wanna impact um, people who are not ready for it. You know, kind of like how some people just really don't like the smell of sage. And those are usually the people who are really not ready to purify their astral field. Um, it's kind of like that. You're, you're like this walking, <laughs> I wouldn't say walking stick of <laughs> activations. 
walking, walking portal of activations. But what I'm being shown here is that you are being increasingly heart-based. So your energetic field um, is, is more and more anchoring in, in the heart. So what, what previously you were less anchored in the heart, you were less grounded as well. Um, and when I say you were less anchored in the heart, it doesn't mean that your heart wasn't powerful. Obviously, it was always will be and it's just always the most powerful but um i see that in the previous cycles of time you were kind of protective over your heart you had like walls around your heart or um you know you were setting up really strong boundaries around your heart and I'm going to want to say walls rather than boundaries because boundaries can be flexible and interdimensional, but it's like you were really trying to protect your heart and a lot of times your heart was closed, you know? And I'm being shown that in the recent time and especially over the next year, your heart is going to blast wide open and it is the most protective thing. It's, it's kind of ironic, right? Because you would think how to protect yourself is to close your heart but actually the way that you protect yourself the most is by blasting your heart wide open because the heart is the most powerful field most purifying and the most balancing field like when your heart and your high heart is authentically wide open it creates like an impenetrable shield of divine protection so it is counterintuitive because you you, you wouldn't maybe not want to open it wide but that's just like one of those things where that's how it works <laughs> you open your heart and you're the most protected um and of course there's other energy centers that you can pull closer to your field but your heart is the fulcrum point of the entire creation is in the core of your heart and i see your high heart opening as well i see your high heart activation um and this is gonna change everything like i literally want to see your heart being open active and your high heart being active it is going to be the thing the thing that changes everything and for example um how i said now that your energy is more anchored to the heart no matter how much you blast people with your light somehow it doesn't affect them negatively because the heart creates this cohesion field and it transfers in an appropriate frequency for the receiver. It's just that cosmic intelligence built within the heart. So that's an example, but with literally everything in your life, if there was one moment, and I'm telling you this and you can remember this later, this is the thing that changed everything. And, you know, why not before is because now is the time. And I say this often, but if you're wondering, like, why didn't I open my heart five years before then? Well, this is exactly why I say you're really um, always feeling like you should have done better or that you should do more or that there's better ways that you could have done something I mean, I don't know where that really came from for you and why you are so hard on yourself, I guess. That's being hard on yourself. I feel like I I, I just like I, I literally want to I literally want to give you a hug and be like, "Do you know how well you did until this point?" And I say until this point because from this point forward, you're gonna just fly 
yeah you're gonna literally just fly it's like a bird who has learned to fly you know baby birds they don't fly in the beginning and then all of a sudden they learn how to fly it's gonna change everything you all right um I see you're really gonna have a focus and you're gonna go for what you want fearlessly. And there's just something that kind of clicks and you let go of the story that things don't happen for you because things are gonna start happening for you. And once you get into that momentum of that co-creative dynamic with the universe where the synchronization is so flawless and that's also because you're in the heart anchored in the heart and your high heart is active that's a key too it's, it's not just your heart it's like your high heart portal and through the high heart portal you're able to bring down all of those unfathomable stellar codes because when you're not anchored in your heart you know when you're not in your heart field when you're not not like Say so your high heart is active. And that's the fulcrum of the entire universe. The same thing happens where your stellar network out there in the trillions of light years away in the galaxy, and you have these stellar systems and these motherships and, you know, these planetary bodies that are so celestial couldn't blast your field with all of the light because you had yet to be centered in your high heart. But after you've established your heart and your high heart portal, and you literally start to vibrate from there with every moment of your existence, which is what is going on, which is very high level consciousness stuff, it's just otherworldly but since now you have that high heart active your star beings your star systems your star networks and i see star beings a lot more than see like angelic realms i mean there's not that much of a separation between all of these interdimensional archetypes but there are when we look at it from the human perspective. But for you, it's like very stellar. Star codes are going to blast your field, blast your life and blast your consciousness more than you could ever have imagined. Because now that you are centered in your high heart, the core of your heart, it is safe for you to be blasted with these high level codes that couldn't be released to you before unless you were actually anchored in the high heart because if not you would just literally pass out and knock out and become imbalanced you know what i mean all right that's an interesting reading i want you to get some rest and reflect on how well you've done i feel like you probably you know what i don't want to analyze stuff like this but you probably had a parent or somebody a partner or somebody that always made you feel like you had to do more you had to do something in order to be loved and maybe that's the reason, or maybe the, I'm sure there's a thousand different parallel reasons why existentially you always feel like you should do better. But I need you to know that you have done a thousand out of a hundred. Like you've done a hundred out of ten. All right. I hope you enjoyed this reading. Enjoy the golden age. You're going to be. You're going to be so good. And I, I forgot to mention that it's going to be very abundant. 
this is abundance codes but i'm sure you knew that already by the energy of this reading okay lots of love and i'll see you in another video or another pile hello pile two if you chose naga of the golden lotus this is going to be your reading about your golden age and as i am taking a look at these energies i honestly want to start off by asking you to take some gentle deep breaths there's a lot going on in your energy i see a lot of crystalline coats in your field in your soul and you have a lot of dimensional access points to the seventh and eighth dimension and also this kind of sixth dimensional anchor point so hmm, it does mean that you are somewhat of an architect of new templates you know like new blueprints here on earth what you might call blueprint architects but you have a very unique approach to these templates that you're bringing forth it does mean that you have this kind of purpose this sole purpose to bring together new systems of living on earth uh, new organizations or infrastructures new technology infrastructures maybe or it could actually be physical infrastructures systems of art agriculture or education or healthcare or finance and it's far more than that far beyond that it's a system of living and kind of new codes of conduct in terms of approaching life and it comes from very pristine and i would say regal realms of life where life is taken with so much sacred gratitude and reverence for if you see like all of these crystals and this is about crystalline codes you see the geometry here the interesting thing though is that yes there are geometries that you would think of as sacred energetic geometries but there's also these life forms that are crystalline geometries this tells me that you're here to bridge together kind of the sacred convergence of different polarities of being what's also interesting to me is you have the lemurian seed codes the anunnaki light codes and the emerald emerald tablet activation you also have this atlantis energy so you have these polaric kind of manifestations of that divine crystallization that you are here to actually bring all together and hold as a harmonic template this means that you've had lifetimes and lifetimes of lifetimes of training for this specific golden age coming up you have a very strong purpose to play and you may sometimes well you do have a very strong sense of purpose and that purpose comes with almost a quietude i feel like you don't really talk about it that much to a lot of people and sometimes it comes with a deep sense of frustration and responsibility. Were you, and sometimes you may feel like, who am I to be doing this? Who am I to be having these goals? Who am I to be imagining these types of shifts in society? Who am I to be the one bringing this forth? And that's quite normal because you're just human at the end of the day and the experience that you have on this plane of existence is that of being individuated from the usual consciousness that you are used to living through which is collective and which is harmonically interweaved into your soul family but you haven't lost that connection with your soul family you're being asked if you can 
first of all, understand the fact that you've been training for this for lifetimes. So it's not necessarily about what experience you have in this incarnation that validates you to bring to such changes. It's about your soul. It's about the lifetimes that you have parallel to this dimension and past lifetimes that you've had prior to this incarnation that is basically coded in the cells and the DNA of your being. Some of this you might even say is pre-programmed into you. And a good way to understand this is that if you truly remember your childhood, and some people totally block it out because it's kind of hmm, painful to remember the childhood with the details, but you might, you would be able to see these tendencies that you had, these interests that you had since you were a child, these emotions that you had towards certain aspects of reality as you were being conditioned into this world. And the very emphasized message here is to be gentle with yourself, gentleness, and have faith in your path. I see you traveling a lot in the next, first of all, in the next year, but also in the next decade, you'll be traveling a lot and you'll kind of have to learn how to walk this earth with this such a powerful connection to your internal self and your interdimensional levels of guidance and your network on an international interdimensional um, network and because i accidentally said international network it looks like you're going to be making a pretty solid international network whether that means you're going to have a lot of friends um, professional partnerships business maybe and clients internationally there's a sense of really manifesting this level of connection that you have with your interdimensional self on the physical plane on this third dimension and it's going to look like it's all over the world so eventually it's kind of going to feel like the whole world is your home you have pockets of home kind of all over the world when you go to different countries or different continents you still establish a sense of a home in each of these points of the earth and that's definitely great work that's part of your role you know when you have so many crystalline frequencies like this crystalline codes then you get to actually anchor that through different points of the earth and that's how you create that template um, on an energetic level and that plays out to a microcosmic scale in how you serve the world so we have the card compassion and if you look at the cards that you keep getting it is gentleness compassion and this is actually the empress card and alongside this lemurian codes um it's asking you to be a divine mother to yourself i feel you maybe didn't have this kind of nurturance as you were growing up and this reading is asking you to become that divine mother to yourself be that divine goddess-like presence that nurtures over yourself um there's this huge notion also of freedom freedom is one of your greatest gifts and freedom is one of your greatest service in embodying how one gets to be free so obviously freedom could quite literally mean being free from the constructs of society and what you have to do so for example like a nine to five job or it could even be institutional freedom it could even be that you're not tied down to having like a nuclear family and being tied to taking care of a family i don't necessarily see even though i see a lot of 
feminine kind of presence with this divine mother energy i don't necessarily see you having like this traditional sense of family i see your sense of family as being a lot more advanced and spiritual as well as just a new age type of family new earth family where your family is like your closest soul family incarnated so it could be a lot of friends that feel like family that's that's more suitable for your sense of family um of course you can have lovers or lover if you choose and when it's aligned but it doesn't seem that you're gonna have this traditional settling down you're a free spirit you travel you're free and also freedom in the sense of financial freedom location freedom and just creative freedom as well so it's actually part of what you're bringing forth here on earth and it is very much relative to these new crystalline codes that you're bringing through in this year and in this next decade it's going to kind of amplify as you embody this way of life and you become very clear with yourself this is the life that i choose to live and you remember a state of existence so if we're speaking about higher dimensions you have a lot of kind of timelines where you are a wanderer you know there is this notion of a wanderer where you're not you're an extra dimensional being but you're not tied to any specific star system you're kind of on the this mothership or just a starship and you explore through dimensions you explore through star systems you explore through planetary systems and you explore through the entire universe you explore through galaxies that's actually a lot of your lifetimes on higher dimensions and you kind of do that level of creative work on a galactic level just spreading codes and bridging together variety of different matrices of life so even on a galactic level it's for example like you go and acquaint yourself with this pleiadian crystalline codes and you find yourself a little home there and then you go over to the lyre and star system and then you activate these crystalline codes you share the other crystalline codes and then you go over to syrian star system and it's like that is your parallel life on a higher dimension um you do have a strong sense of connection with the andromedan field of light so that may be more of like your origins a lot of your origins on these timelines where you are a wanderer but you would not necessarily call yourself that because after a certain point of eons of exploring you're no longer really tied to an origin we have here the initiation sorry we have here the initiation so in the next year whoops in the next year it seems that you're crossing the threshold of everything that you thought you knew about yourself and it's almost as if everything that you have been learning putting together in different lifetimes and in throughout your whole life in this life is coming together for you to actually embody and take the leap so it's really like you have a decision to make in the way you will approach reality the way that you will make your decisions the way that you will vibrate as a field of consciousness in a specific way that you have been training for so that would include this type of freedom in your codes these crystalline lattices you have in your field and this way of gentleness this is really feminine energy so it's about really embodying that divine feminine essence 
in complete harmonic union with that divine masculine. But the way that you get to choose to express this is Venusian in a lot of ways, actually. So you have these Hathor codes, Venusian, and you do have a parallel life that you're actually spending in the planetary body of Venus that you are being anchored with. So actually in your Lemurian lifetimes, you also had this very strong sovereign connection with the planetary frequencies of Venus. You're anchoring that down through. I see that even in your Atlantean timelines, which is rare because um, that's not something that was the focus of the Atlantean civilization, but you did have that kind of purpose to bridge together these Venusian templates and you're being initiated to live that now and it is going to seem like the things that you want, the things that you want to do are going to feel counterintuitive that to what you think that you should be doing and it's going to break generational patterns but know that it's going to feel so natural for you as soon as you begin to remember this truth of your codes. We have life force with snake and it's, we have the snake imagery here also. So you have this really powerful Kundalini energy and your Kundalini life force is activating and this spiral, these repetitive images of the spiral. And this beautiful card, Pearl Authenticity. Kind of ran out of space. So you have a lot of energies moving through your system, your spine. Like even this looks like chakras and this spiraling up your chakras. You're being energetically bombarded with life force and codes. And I see that your life force energy, it is deeply interwoven with a realm of the earth that is very sacred. I would even say this seventh dimensional internal civilization in the earth specifically connected with the Andromeda. And I also feel like these Arcturian energies with you where these crystalline codes that have been integrated with the inner civilization of the earth, so the inner earth realms, is what is being kind of woven into your energetic pillar. So when it says just be gentle with yourself, your sense of productivity because of the level of the energetic integration that you're doing, and this is not just like on a subtle level, this is life force energy. This is energy that is being integrated with your Kundalini, which is so interwoven with your physical body. It's not just on a subtle, it's not like astral ethereal, it's also physical. So quite literally the energies that you are integrating on a physical level, and you've been doing this, this whole life, but I see this opening up deeper in you in the next year and in the next decade. So take excellent care of your body and be gentle with yourself because this work that you're doing and integrating these levels of celestial Terran energies that are very specific, like I don't know that I've ever seen this type of message before. It's so much of service to both yourself and the planet and this is the type of energy that once you integrate this by listening to your intuition to how you can best be of service for yourself and just be a, a nurturing mother for yourself as you are going through these activations and integrations the work that you are doing for your both yourself and the planet is 
productivity is not the right word for it, but it's very productive. So when you have a bunch of things that you feel like you need to do, being productive, I want you to think again, because there's so much going on with you energetically and physically as you integrate these energies. And this type of energy is one that polishes your consciousness, polishes your set of belief systems, polishes your vibrational frequencies on a day-to-day -day level. So notice these subtle shifts that happen because I think that you can actually feel these energies. Sometimes you might be literally laying awake at night and can't sleep because of these energies rising up or you may find yourself literally being viscerally activated and you have to just kind of rest. So exercise and, you know, obviously healthy nutrition is pivotal here. And I see that all of this kind of really crystallizes into something really precious. It's so interesting, actually, how this Kuan Yin card is holding the globe like this. And this feminine figure is also holding this pearl like that. It's like you're nurturing something so sacred. You're going to be birthing something so sacred. And this something that you are birthing is definitely your soul mission, the actualization of your soul mission. This is going to be some kind of a business or a form of art, maybe a modality or a body of work that you're going to be birthing. And it is a product of you integrating all of these energies and this is a seed code for the new earth so that this is actually going to help shift the consciousness of society and i see this as something that is kind of medicinal to a large population um and it has a very specific code or frequency for this new earth template so please have compassion for yourself and don't expect yourself to be this high-powered individual in the traditional sense like if you have an idea of what success looks like and i definitely see that you have this drive to be successful it's just the nature of these higher dimensional energies like you're a legend and <laughs> let me repeat you're a legend and you might want to actualize that on this physical plane just because that's the nature of who you are like you even have these higher light codes and all of these oh my yeah you're you're meant to be a legend in in your own way and you might be thinking of the a specific path that's going to help you materialize that but it's not really in alignment with the very authentic way that you're going to come into that i guess status or achievement because your path is so unique and it's divinely guided and it's been interwoven for multiple lifetimes so what you think gets somebody from point A to point B is not how it is for you because your path is integrating multiple dimensions, multiple crystalline codes, and various polarities of existence. So the way that gets to fruition on this realm uh, is not how you think it's going to work. But if you just allow yourself to notice these shifts that occur with these life force energies that you integrate and being nurturing for yourself and gentle for yourself to be able to actually harness these energies and take the aligned action as you intuitively listen to this intelligent life force, like this life force that is rising through you is intelligent. It is like divine sparks of intelligence that knows the merge of celestial and earthly codes. And it's going to guide you every step of the way. 
and no, you're not going to be able to see what is coming up ahead always because things are so outside of the scope of your imagination when it comes to a paradigm integration like this. Um, but just be attuned to yourself, attuned to the wisdom within you and understand this. Like if you look at all these rainbow energy, it's like you're a rainbow, rainbow child or whatever. Like, I don't really want to call it a rainbow child because <laughs> it's not limited to a child, a rainbow adult. <laughs> A rainbow soul. You have a lot of rainbow codes. So, even look at this. It's like, it says you've been training for this for lifetimes. So look at this structure that this lady is building in the field. All right. I think that might be the end of your message. Is there anything else? Oh, I forgot to mention, um, in this lifetime, you are meant to achieve your spectrum of enlightenment. Um, so if you see this, if you see that, like these enlightened energies, and with all of these light codes, is asking you to prioritize your consciousness. It doesn't take long to prioritize your consciousness, but before you even take a look at your day and you're like, I have to get this done, that done, this done, that done. And throughout the day when you are like, okay, now I have to do that. Now I have to do this. Drop that type of conversation or that type of inner, inner direction, soften it up and prioritize your state of consciousness. Yes, you can go ahead and do what you need to do, but it shows that one of your primary missions or one of your primary purpose throughout the next year and the next decade is to achieve this enlightened level of consciousness. I know that word could be a little bit cringy and full of charge, but it's what you're here to do. It's what you're here to bridge and it's what you're here to embody, which also points me back to this freedom card the highest level of freedom is on the plane of your mind. If you can be free from mental constructs, if you can be free with a state of enlightenment to the bondages of the lower levels of your mind, that's the ultimate freedom. And it's one of the key aspects that you're here to anchor and crystallize. So it may not look like you're always sitting and meditating because that's just like an you know, that's just like a basic foundation way of getting started with anchoring in higher consciousness. But eventually you get to a point where you do it momentarily and then you carry out that frequency throughout everything you do. When you're exercising, when you are walking, when you're eating, when you are creating. So if there's one final advice that I have for you, is to know the power of your state of consciousness and make that your kind of North Star metric, one of your North Stars that you lead yourself with. And I can't emphasize enough, be gentle and compassionate with yourself because right now you're a bit harsh on yourself. And yes, the world kind of conditions you to believe that is the way to live, that's the way to survive, that's the way to thrive, but that's just really outdated for someone like you. You're here to live the new way of higher dimensional celestial integrations into the earth and you've had ancient lifetimes, literally thousands that I see to prepare for this. Thousands of life streams wow it's beautiful because it's like this regal energy of those ancient lifetimes all right i hope this reading was helpful thank you so much for spending time with me here if you enjoy my readings you can visit my patreon for 
hundreds of exclusive readings and observations, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hello, everyone who chose pile number three or Sovereign Cohesion, which is the Emperor. And I also have this card for you, which is really cute. Tire and Lion. <laughs> this is in it, but not of it. This is the Wheel of Life, and this is the Emperor card. So first and foremost is a lot of Laren energy. And if you see this, there's a lot of imagery around the sun, like these solar codes. So you have these very powerful solar codes that you are here to integrate and emit. And this is a really powerful energy. Um, I have to point out the fact that when I was shuffling, I got two of the same cards as pile one. So I'm just gonna put that out there. If you resonate with that pile, um, the message there is going to be really helpful for you. Like I couldn't have, I'm shuffling. I couldn't have chose this myself. Mm, let's dive into your reading. When I tune into this energy, I also have to say that, sorry, before, before I move on, I also have to say that you have this star mother card about nurturing yourself and mothering yourself and becoming your own divine mother. And this message was the same entire theme for pile number two. So you have the recurring themes from pile number one and pile number two. So it means also that you have a very multifaceted archetype that exhibits many different qualities. So it's like you are kind of weaving and synthesizing through multiple different soul streams or geometries and you're a very complex being. And that might be why it took such a long time from your mind, from your mind you think it's a long time, but from the cosmic eye, it's so fast and efficient. The progress of your life and the kind of fruition of your efforts take a much longer time than you could have expected from your mental level because of the level of complexity that you have. So just know that there's a reason for that. Just imagine that there is this formula of how everything gets to interweave. And whereas a lot of people may see results from activating one set of archetype, you're out there weaving in and harmonizing multiple different archetypes and multiple different cosmic energies, multiple different lineages. It is quite literally like you're integrating multiple different lineages. And there is this sense of, um, there's a sense of regality to your soul stream. There's this warrior energy, right? There's this warrior energy that comes across with this reading. And so you may be, for your personal golden age, be really initiated to stand up for what matters to you and protect the values that you have and protect the belief systems that you know are sacred to you. So this entire world is full of morphogenetic patterning from the mass collective and part of your role is to filter out those beliefs and it may feel so challenging at first to be able to do this but it is to really get into a observer seat, which you have here with in it, but not of it. This is a high level observer seat of a higher level cognition to be able to witness the patterns of your life, observe the patterns of your life and identify the overarching kind of ideology that is behind a certain emotion in a situation or a certain situ a scenario that keeps playing out and you're able to kind of filter out what it is that is being conditioned or the ideology that is being planted expressed through that field 
and be able to rewire it to the way that you know is going to serve your highest good and for that of the collective. Um, this is deep, deep inner work and this is really how you're going to progress into the next cycles of your life and be able to bring about this personal golden age. Again, this central sun card is abundance and the sort of light coming through with that and also with uh, sovereign cohesion, this is really like architecting your own parameters of reality and being highly discerning to protect everything that is not in alignment with this solar codes. Um, you have a very strong stream of solar energy that you are aligned to, like you're attuned to solar energy and a lot of solar systems that are past our solar system. So it's like you're integrating multiple solar codes and gathering, harmonizing it. And there's this sense of macrocosmic shift in the way that you show up. Like you are this tangible incarnation of this macrocosmic shift. It's actually so much bigger than who you are as a person, but it's like everything that you are driven to do or desire to want and everything that you are doing on a personal level is quite literally responding to a macrocosmic shift and all of these solar plasmic energy you have a strong kind of predisposed receptivity to higher levels of these codes okay so let me stop here and see what else is going on um yeah, you have this rebel card, revolutionary. So the way in which you're going to show up, the way in which you're going to choose to craft your reality is revolutionary. Um, and it calls for this celebration energy. And also this card with yes, it kind of vibes like a community. And this comes up with star gathering. So it does show me that you have a very strong soul community or a network of people that are going to be kind of drawn to this energy and they are your tribe that is going to support you and celebrate with you and kind of create this resonance with you as you move through these cycles hathor energy is speaks of very high level abundance cosmic abundance comes coming up with this central sun abundance downloads card this indeed is a, a very very strong message around your sense of abundance and how you choose to channel this energy of abundance channel this energy of this natural state of prosperity of the cosmic design into your personal reality and assisting to activate the collective with this new way of being um, we have the tree of life connection which connection again is amplified so i don't even know that if you know this but you have a very strong group of soul family that is incarnate here on earth at this time and some of them you have not met yet and some of them i think you already know of them perhaps but you are connected to some people on a soul level that you're not really even aware of yet and this is going to play such a crucial part in how you're going to show up in the world uh, as you have this cohesion with this soul family network the way that you navigate through reality is going to become so much more nurturing and i feel a lot of like priestess high priestess energy and the kind of message or the repetitive action that i see here is like people throwing their hands up and people are just having their hands up so first of all this is like the resonance of movement 
like physical movements, I see even dance as a really significant part of how you anchor and integrate energies. And there are a couple things that I want to share so that you calibrate to the core truth of your personal and collective golden age. First of all, is as as we are going through this transition right now, I feel an energy of you almost sometimes wanting to give up. And sometimes you are actually not stepping into this higher level aspect of yourself that knows exactly how to properly work through situations to direct your will in your desired way. And when I say desire, I mean, it's, it's not just an egoic desire. This is a soul desire. This is a heart and soul desire. You are in alignment with your heart and soul desire. And there's a, there's a very high level of your consciousness and a very strong connection with your soul star that you could actually navigate through situations very easily, very effortlessly. But there's another part of you that is terrified to actually live from that space because that is such a powerful space to be at. And it's also, again, the morphogenetic grid. And the reason why I continue to mention the morphogenetic grid is, is that there's a few imagery here that signals to the collective energy and kind of like this macrocosmic cycle. So you're very in tune with macrocosmic energy. I see like the Mayan energy of being scientifically attuned to the cycles of the cosmos. And you just have this um, very visceral, palpable way of relating with the macrocosm. And there's a part of you that sometimes unconsciously gets pulled into integrate the rest of the collective when you personally have the way to navigate through situations very 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 powerfully and effectively and now you're being initiated to actually live from that empowered state where no matter what the challenge is no matter what the situation is at hand you have this ability to connect with your higher faculty of mind and that could feel either like you're cheating in the game it almost feels like you are like can i actually use this part of my consciousness like i know it sounds ridiculous when i say it like that but there's a part of your subconscious that mind that feels like can i can I truly use it? Am, am I allowed to use this? You know, when you <laughs> step into a new structure or a new set of rules, you're like, I, I can, am I allowed to do this in the game? Am I allowed to use this for this purpose? <laughs> that feels like, that feels kind of like how, how you're navigating, how you've been navigating through this earthly life. And it's, it's funny. Yes, you're allowed to use that part of your mind. You're allowed to use that part of your consciousness. The fact that you had this question lingering in the back of your mind does mean, however, that in the past you weren't safe to use it. Maybe in a different context, maybe in a different organization, maybe in a different institution, maybe in a different family situation, environment. There is a hierarchy of social constructs that you have to abide by. But now I feel like you're at a position where that's not there anymore. And you have to come to realize that situations are very different for you now. You can do this. You can navigate through situations. You can use the highest faculty of your consciousness. It's fine. Um, it's safe to do that. Um, I do see that you have a lot of integrity. I sense almost like this Christ and Archangel energy. You know, this unfallen, pristine emanation of angelic energy and you are very well balanced between the polarities within you so this higher scamos template of masculine and feminine being this one united heart and also the mm, higher and lower self there's this impenetrable unity consciousness that you have within 
that flawlessly integrates the higher and lower self of you. And I feel like that's partially the portion of your consciousness that you were afraid to fully utilize because there's all these beliefs in the morphogenetic field in the greater society about the general hierarchy of where human fits into the universe. There's this belief that the divine is above the human and that you are here to experientially embody the knowing that the two are one, the divine is human, you are a divine human, and that stretches out into your connection with nature, also that the human is one with nature. And I see that you're going to be glowing up. Uh, <laughs> we have this shapeshifter fluidity card, but for me, that signals to a physical glow up, and you're very much in connection with your physical body. Your connection with your physical body is divine. So whenever you need to work through situations, challenges, your communion from the very instinctual levels of yourself, it, because you have lifetimes where there was no separation between the physical, mental, and emotional, and you have this kind of uh, pathway, energetic pathway between your physical level versus like all the other levels of your being, so your physical body is very well integrated and as you start to heal the split of the other levels of your mind of being able to really embrace that unity that you have within um, which you already have that template but you again you are not sure if you're allowed to just live like that and i'm telling you you're allowed to live like that and not only are you allowed to live like that, there's no other way for you to show up other than the, that fullest version of yourself anymore. And you're going to have a very, very solid, again, a very solid friend group that is coming in um, in the next year and the next decade. And a lot of things that you felt like you were kind of alone to deal with in terms of like your soul mission, your soul path and this kind of um, uh, the, the calling, soul calling that you have yes you're going to be a leader in whatever you are creating right there's this leader energy but you're going to be surrounded by other leaders and i don't think that this this doesn't feel like they're any more or less i know that there is should should never really be this question of more or less but humans have been so conditioned to follow this hierarchical structure of systems but i see you having like a a, a very solid group of empowered leaders that are specialized in their own kind of category and they harmonize with each other it's like i don't even think you've had an in your imagination knew that this type of community was possible that like such a fulfilling community but anyway with all of these embodiment cards you can create a lot of magic through movement and you're able to actually get into a state of high level transcendence utilizing movement so for you for example instead of just sitting still to meditate for a really long time uh, try incorporating movement into your kind of transcendence practice and I, you may do this already but it's showing me that you have the permission slip to actually make that into a deeper level of your reality so that like dance practices or yoga or weightlifting or pilates or any other form of movement they're inviting you to actually create a spiritual practice out of that more intentionally um and going back to the glow up i see you becoming more beautiful and beautiful it doesn't mean feminine right it could be masculine or feminine and, and anything can be beautiful you're becoming more beautiful like you're embodying this beauty and I feel like at first you're going to go through a series of deconditioning. So the big thing about your consciousness is that you, in, in the way that you de-plug from mass belief systems that are largely unconsciously baked into society, you have this ability to directly rewire that to a constructive belief system that fits more in alignment with these very stellar codes and you don't really have really an example 
So all of this is going to be authentic. The way that I say that you don't really have an example is like, you're a mixture of multiple soul lineages. You're a mixture of multiple different like civilizations. And that means that yes, you can have mentors and guides that can provide very significant kind of permission slips or transmissions but at the end it's always going to be a process of taking everything that you have learned and creating something new out of it and everything that you create is going to be innovative in some way it's like that rebel energy and i know that's what you should do anybody should never take everything that somebody teaches or says as a hundred percent truth everybody should always discern the information but for you this is like 10 times more complex because you're not just doing it with one stream of information or a couple streams of information you're going to be doing this with literally like archetypes of information not just the nitty-gritty details of that information not just like some body of knowledge but it's the higher level patterning of specific lineages it's like combining archetypes of frequencies that otherwise wouldn't really have much to do with each other unless there was somebody like you to be able to do this work of synthesizing synthesis is the word synthesis and so anyway going back to the i keep having to go back to the glow up you're gonna have a physical glow up you're gonna find your style and even if you already have an authentic style or the way that you present yourself, it's gonna up level. Like you're just gonna look really like yourself, how you're meant to look as a spiritual being. So like, imagine you have all these different soul lineages from different levels of being, these stellar networks and these planetary bodies, these motherships, and somehow it's going to make so much sense in the way that you look on this physical plane you're gonna look beautiful and just just essentially like radiantly more healthy more glowing so the final message that i have for you is to not give up so i felt this feeling like you sometimes are just ready to give up and things don't always kind of go in the direction that you prepare for but there is this cosmic design of intelligence that it's exactly how everything was supposed to turn out. But I feel like you might be at a stage where you're like feeling as if everything was for nothing. And of course, there's a part of you, a greater part of you that understands the truth of how everything was intelligently directed but there's another part of you that just can't put all of the dots together because again, you're weaving in so many different streams of consciousness. You're weaving in so many different lineages. You're weaving in so many different facets of these cosmic energies. But there is a point where everything will come together and connect. And I feel like a lot of those you will find through other people through community and it's not coming from a space of like needing other people it's not coming from a space of you can't do it without other people but these other people are part of your soul network and each of you it's like the other people that you're gonna begin to meet have these types of qualities where they are also integrating various archetypes also integrating various soul lineages and together it will begin to make sense but you are each this sovereign empowered being it's not like anybody needs anybody else and i feel like you've almost actually had to learn lessons around people who do need something from you and your sense of community may have been distorted in your experience because Oftentimes people either try to use your light or use your power or, you know, not in a way maybe that was conscious, but subconsciously you've 
drawn people in the past who just were lost or just needed a connection you know these codependent people and i so i don't think that you see this coming where your actual genuine star people are going to come into the picture where a lot of things make sense and then you truly get to experience this interdependent so it's not it's not dependent it's not independent but it's interdependent it's between independent beings that connect to a higher pattern higher geometry so again don't give up when you have this voice inside of you that feels like giving up notice it as a just a faculty of a frequency of being it's a faculty of an ideology but listen there's no giving up because even if you gave up you would still end up on the aligned path for how you showed up how for for how you're meant to show up i i feel like no matter what you do you're always going to end up on the right path not that no matter what you do no matter what you decide that is going to be the right thing but you have this calibrative aspect where whatever you choose you naturally calibrate back to your aligned soul frequency so even if you gave up you would eventually just return back to its calibration um so I guess the last piece of advice I would I would have here is just not to overthink it. I don't necessarily think that you're always overthinking it, but I think that there is this sense of confusion because your mind can't and your ego can't possibly grasp all of these different subdimensions connecting your weaver of dimensions that don't really exist together. And it's creating something so authentic and unique which is the earth is the one place that you can have that you know you've had parallel rendering of your oversoul in so many different dimensions that are very very i guess irrelevant to a degree of the human mind but here on earth you're weaving that together as a piece of this cohesion that the earth represents as a microcosm of the macrocosm okay so that was your reading i hope that this has been helpful if you enjoy my transmissions please check out my patreon where there's hundreds of exclusive readings and activations and i'll talk to you soon i'll see you in another video bye hello beautiful beings who chose pile number four or lineage slash hierophant this is a hierophant card but it could potentially be one of the most beautiful hierophant cards that i've ever seen well so are a lot of the other representations in this whole deck but it also comes up with rebirth which is the phoenix card phoenix of the white fire this has like a sonnet kumara type of energy to it um this planetary logos of the earth and I want to let you know that you have two Hathor cards. So this personal golden age that is opening up for you through the next year into the next decade is really about unfolding these lineages, these royal lineages that you have through this Hathor star nation. You also have other kind of lineages showing up such as Atlantis even though that's not really a lineage there is a very specific lineage that you held through atlantis a mystery school kind of teaching mystery school lineage and we also have the anunnaki light codes which i don't want you to be thrown off by the word anunnaki because there are some negative connotations around anunnaki but essentially it just means light beings and yes there were light beings in the history of earth that were quite controlling but anunnaki itself is a neutral charged 
reference to light beings. Well, there are two roses, and this also connects back with Venus. So you have a really strong connection with the planetary logos of Venus and the way of life on Venus. Venus is a planet that also has this internal civilization, just like how there's an inner Earth civilization. Venus also has an inner Venusian civilization that is a powerful kind of influence on the evolution of earth and the general cosmos and the solar system but venus is truly like heaven on earth we also have the lemuria card and what i'm starting to notice is that lemuria is also very deeply connected with venus and so you're kind of like <laughs> from venus you're from venus whether you're a man or a woman um you're from venus and we have the sovereignty card well, I sense this lifetime that you're tapping into that has a very kind of female, feminine emanation. And this Hathor like codes that are activating. And it's really interesting that you have two Hathor cards. Like, how many cards in the world have Hathor in the deck? Not many, but we have two cards here with Hathor. And Hathor is, first and foremost, this profound sense of abundance. Profound abundance. So not just like regular abundance. It's not even generational abundance. It's profound abundance, like collective shifting abundance. It's not just about your family line, but it's about abundance that spills over to influence the world, the paradigm of our society. So what I sense about the next year and the next decade that is unfolding for you, you know, this rose is really about ever unfolding. And it's around, it's happening to you. It's happening, it's happening for you, not to you. What I get this feeling with this lineage card as well, this hierophant, with this spiritual hierarchy, that you have this deep soul connection with. The next decade, whether you realize this about yourself or not, is extremely destined to happen. And it's not a matter of you not having any conscious free will or a choice how it gets to happen because you're gonna get to show up and choose how it gets to happen. But a lot of what is going to go down in the next decade and this kind of personal golden age and this level of abundance that is seeking to literally overflow through you and this is a completely new way of being for you it's as if you have a new life you are not gonna recognize yourself i don't even think in a year but let alone 10 years but it's the true nature of who you are and you get glimpses of this in certain states, certain transcendent states, maybe in medicine states or maybe in deep meditation, maybe in trance states. You have glimpses of yourself like this and then you have this past version of yourself that is so foreign to this way, new way of being. The new way is actually your original way of being just feeling completely rested and supported by the universe but in either way if you're wondering how it's all going to happen it's basically written in your path your path is set and that path has been set before you were born and the past has been chosen the path has been chosen by you in every day that you showed up in your incarnation and the way that you crafted your frequency until now it's at this level of surrender where you know people may not be aware of the layers of their codes of course people can be trying to understand all of their thoughts and belief systems but for the most part People are blindsided to their deeper levels of codes that are set in terms of the function or like the very high level of the code where they're so deeply interweaved with your incarnation that 
it's difficult to even recognize that it's there just like how fish in water will have a hard time understanding what water is because it is so deep in their experience because it is so abundant fish doesn't really understand the quality of water until it's out of the water until maybe somebody pulls it out of the water and then the fish will start to freak out be like what is this and then it starts to understand water and that's almost like this level of these kind of soul lineages that you have with this venusian calibration in this venusian code you are so deeply ingrained in these venusian codes of reality that you don't know what it's like to not be in it even though you've been conditioned by this earthly reality and even though you have had to meet the collective morphogenetic programming of this humanity you are still basked in the codes of venus and it has carried you thus far it hasn't necessarily integrated to the multiple different facets of you and this ancestral meat suit that you are embodying i mean this sacred sacred vessel that holds codes of your ancestors i feel that you are going to completely alchemize them and it's so interesting because it's like your genetic lineage is agreeably completely being reborn into your soul lineage and the most immediate one is venus even though you may have all of these different connections with other star systems, Venus is like this hub of where you have been residing in this solar system to take in all of the plasmic codes of the sun. And this Ven Venusian realm was where you were stationed when you had incarnations through atlantis and both lemuria and atlantis i see you more like were light beings that would come and go to atlantis and lemuria and less like a human that was incarnated through that time do you understand how atlantis and lemuria both had very sacred relationships with light beings and i see you being some of the light beings that came to work with the human civilization both with atlantis and lemuria so your station was actually in venus and your station still is on large level is in venus so even though you have an earthly incarnation here you're human here i'm sure you're completely human here um well for the exception of hybrids but you're still human right but actually your consciousness has a by location on venus right now and you might be getting chills all over your spine and if that happened to you or something some other sensation as a clear sentient that you carry um that is very true that you have this dual rendering of your consciousness almost like your twin flame aspect on venus and i don't want to say twin flame in the traditional sense of having a partner but just a a very significant rendering of your consciousness is parallel in venus and that's actually what you're streaming a lot of the times even when you're connecting with your higher self or your divine guides i'm not sure if you knew this but a lot of that aspect is stationed in venus and the internal civilization of venus and even when you are connecting with like say palladian um star beings or andromedan arcturian star beings even though for you i feel like a lot of the light beings that you are in contact with that you are in communion with don't really have a label even though they would have gone through multiple stages and cycles throughout various different stellar systems uh, it's not really labeled it's more like higher dimensional light frequency conscious beings that for example are at one with their starships and that hold this very 
harmonic group consciousness with the remainder of the universe and so these levels of you are stationed through venus and they could come and go but you definitely have a main body of guides and kind of uh, spiritual advisors on the planetary body of venus and it's gonna be very healing for you to integrate this information if you didn't know this already well if you already knew this it's going to be a very healthy validation for you but if you didn't know this it's going to help you a lot to actually understand this so that you have a very clear connection with that intentionally that you can connect with your venusian your venusian guides your venusian self it's actually yourself we also have dolphin embodiment and we have resilience lotus what else we got here we have priestess how are you being called to step up and lead and this coming up with queen imagine you're like a queen priestess <laughs> so sovereign and so powerful you are definitely a leader but a leader in in a feminine way so it's of empowerment but i definitely feel like when you're in this type of position when you're in this type of power and i feel like your power is almost um like stealth mode like you've been living a life of stealth mode power like you don't really blatantly go and advertise your power even though i mean who really goes and advertises their authentic power and if you have true authentic power you have the right to actually go and broadcast it so it's not about like it's being better or worse but i feel like you've been quite low-key with your level of power uh for multiple reasons first of all it's like this fetus imagery you've been incubating you've been underground incubating low-key and i love to use the example of a bamboo tree so the bamboo plant grows underground for seven years before it comes online onto the planetary surface and then once it hits the planetary surface it grows exponentially and i feel that's kind of you you've been incubating you've been underground and you've been almost like protected if you feel like well i'm not really known in the world i'm not really uh widely recognized for my gifts or abilities but you're this sovereign queen from venus you're literally like a lineage of the hathor um and i i also want to highlight once again you have both atlantis and lumeria you're very heavily involved in the weaving of these civilizations as a light being more so than a human you're involved with these civilizations as the guiding light beings um your low keyness or your kind of stealth mode was a form of protection so imagine if you were actually widely known at the time it wouldn't have been of service either to yourself or the collective um but if there's any part of you that feels like you haven't stepped into that potential of service or being of service to a lot of people or just being recognized uh that's actually because it was not time yet and we also the the lotus card too is like this card in particular it shows the mud of the lotus you know like the underground aspect of lotus so i just have a couple of suggestions for you advice calibration as you're gonna be actually activating into the world in the next year so i see that rebirth and the activation and coming online of your actual abilities and gifts and the recognition of it coming online in the next year it's going to begin and in the decade it's going to actually multiply and it's like you had to have your roots firmly grounded underneath the earth you had to have your roots firmly grounded through the density of the earth you had a lot of training you had to actually literally sift through the mud the mud and the density of the world and now you are firmly rooted and grounded 
and you had to be protected to some level until this moment this level of sacredness until you learn a strong sense of boundaries because i also see this card the crumbling what are you clinging on to and this card also came up earlier around what is not aligned must go and trusting your intuition about that so i feel like one of the biggest reasons was that you had to learn the total and complete package of lessons around boundaries it's not just like you learn as you go and you learn by trial and error because the light that you're here to shine it is very pure it's pristine and it's a lot of feminine energy so also you have swan with grace so that's like i can't say in how many angles can we show the energy of venus um there's just so many ways okay so let me just remove some of these cards so you can actually look at the imagery because yeah okay i'll leave it there in anna too it just talks about going through a lot of shadows to arrive a lot of shadows a lot of shadows a lot of mud until you learned your lesson of boundaries and your boundaries technologies have kind of fruitioned to this level where now you can come out and that stability you feel with the earth i feel like the connection that you've established with the planet earth is now made so in the next year and in the next 10 years you can co completely come online and alive and with you i feel like you know some of the elements of what you are here to do or create or be of service of through the golden age is unknowable it's not really being shown to me but in a very sacred way where it's like masked for a very profound reason it's not like you're hiding it but it feels more like divine protection so if there are some elements that you don't know that is also divine protection so that for example if you're conscious of something maybe you're going to doubt yourself you know what i mean and that's going to kind of distort the purity of that which you were meant to do and so even if you can't see exactly what you're going to be doing in the next decade it's like i get this ninja vibes of like that is protection but also when you do find the elements keep your cards close to your chest like don't go and tell people unless they are very 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 mm, resonant with your soul and it feels like you're being guided to share some elements but it does feel like there's this sacred veil of darkness that is protecting you from becoming too aware of what you're going to do of course always your soul mission is a state of being it's a frequency of being um but it does seem that they want you to be very comfortable with the stages of not knowing exactly and also with this um this incubation that i see in the heart let's go back to the boundaries thing you have recently learned your boundaries it's like this rose as well roses have their boundaries of their thorns on the stems and this heart that the baby is being incubated the heart is a powerful field that protects you from external energies and so it does seem like you had to cultivate this very strong relationship with the earth and this groundedness to the earth and the relationship with the density of this earth you had to learn shadow work and how you particularly move through that energy and being in the heart and the establishing interdimensional boundaries boundaries that are not fixed boundaries that are supportive of evolution boundaries that evolve alongside you so that is exactly what 
had to occur before you come into your full fruition and power. And now you're going to really find out how it is that you're going to start channeling these sovereign queen priestess energies as a conduit of Hathor. With this dolphin embodiment card, you have the potential to channel a lot of tantric energy, which is a divine higher gamos union of masculine and feminine. So you have this very powerful ability to be able to channel these ecstatic bliss states. So that's, first of all, something that I want to bring your attention to, to be aware of your bodily ability to channel these ecstatic energies and sometimes it might be uncomfortable and if you become very keenly aware of your body keenly aware of the signals of your body when you feel this rush of energy that is very blissful through your body you might find yourself kind of suppressing that because it feels very sensual and maybe you don't feel like it's the right time to feel that way it's like you know it's in the middle of nowhere in the middle of no and like some and random time you know what i mean but the guidance is that it's a life force that you are channeling and it's not necessarily sensual in terms of like the traditional way that people perceive that but you have an ability to actually ground and anchor that energy into the earth so whenever you feel that sensation rising up and through your body connect with the earth and take breaths in synchrony with the earth important advice that i have for you is to activate your heart center and connect with the heart of the earth and take breaths to synchronize from your heart to the heart of the earth that is a very powerful practice for you to be able to really anchor into this um these energies the dolphin again i want to i want to come back to the dolphin card oh you can't actually even see it so the dolphin card speaks to me about pleiades in this context so i see this lemurian energy with pleiades you also had these Palladian influences through Lemuria and that would have been I feel as a scientist type of way I mean scientist is a very human word but if you were to put words to what the Palladian light beings were doing it's like you were a scientist so you're very much connected with the biochemistry of the earth the different minerals the different plants and you have this kind of strong intuition when it comes to the elements of the earth the elements of the cosmos and the flora and fauna the flowers these plant kingdoms that you have a very strong connection with and the elementals so you may have a profound communion with like fairy energy and this entire realm of nymphs that were essentially elemental expressions of beings that were living in embodied bliss like basically like this embodied ecstatic states of consciousness and so people's impression of nymphs are that they were just lying around all day doing nothing but actually they were literally lying around in nature with ecstatic states of enlightened consciousness so there's this part of you that is actually here to live that so you have an ability to actually exist in your physical being and feel ecstatic all day and this might be interesting for you to consider that even when you're at the lowest moments of your life you have to remember that i told this to you and that you this is an inner truth that you already know but i'm here to reflect it for you even at the worst states of emotions or situations if you actually wake up to your abilities and the true nature of who you are you for example especially with all this venusian energy with all this hathor and this embodiment pleiadian elemental fairy nymph energy i know that's just a melange of different <laughs> archetypes of energy but that's really like you have many different petals to your being um 
and it's a very specific complex. So you have a very unique stamp of this diverse combination of lineages, basically, but essentially through any challenging situation or emotion or any density, even during moments of pain and suffering, you have an ability to actually calibrate your physical vessel to resonate in embodied bliss and that might feel like the wrong thing to do because when you're actually going through sadness or shadows or pain or suffering you don't want to feel blissful but you actually have an ability to transmute that state into bliss and this is not any sort of escapism or any sort of bypassing because when you are recognizing the state that you are in and you choose to vibrate that into a bliss state, you are alchemizing the density rather than bypassing it. Bypassing it would be like pretending like it doesn't exist and numbing yourself. But what I'm saying here with this embodied bliss is that you're able to identify the parts of your being that is vibrating in that low state of fear or pain or suffering and bio energetically vibrate and amp up the frequency into a bliss state you know how to do this because it's weaving into your soul lineage and dna you literally had lifetimes actually teaching this i see you like teaching this as a priestess energy and um, even through to Atlantis and Lemuria, these were part of your transmissions as a light being to be able to utilize the vehicle of elements and density into a transcendent state of being. So that's actually um, what you're capable of and what you're partially what you're here to do. And of course, to emanate this Hathor code is profound abundance luxury beauty there's a lot of beauty in your energy and um you know this reading also has a lot of cross connections with other piles but i'm not going to mention which because it just seems like a lot of the piles were connected with each other so you just use your intuition to tune into other ones if you feel like it um but otherwise the other aspects of your golden age you know i've i've kind of shared with you the gifts and abilities you have and how to actually get there there's a lot of your future that you can't really see yet it's like you can't really figure out what's going to happen what exactly you're supposed to do but that is going to be revealed in time and it is hidden for a very sacred purpose um, needless to say, you're here to create ripples and impact in the civilization. But first and foremost are these profound gifts of consciousness that you have to emanate and this bliss state that you are here to exist in. No matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstance, understanding the potency of your alchemical consciousness through any state of existence. And, and that is really the opening up to a new way of life. All right, I hope that this reading has been helpful. Thank you so much for spending time with me here and trusting me with your reading. If you like my transmission style, please check out my Patreon where there's literally hundreds of exclusive readings and activations. And I'll see you in another video. Lots of love. Bye.